And welcome everyone, thanks for coming to the now secure session at Black Hat 2021. Under the title Cracking Fun with Frida and Rodave, we will present a quick demo on how to analyze, instrument and extend an iOS app that have access to an IoT device, always taking into consideration the privacy and security concerns. So to begin with, let me answer a quick question. Who are we and what we do? My name is Sergi Alvarez, I'm also known as Pancake, and I'm the author of Radare, as well as r 2 frida r 2 frida is a plugin for r 2 that is able to interface with Frida. So we also have Ulandre, which is uh, the author of Frida. We are free software enthusiasts and we are working at, uh, as a mobile security researcher at NowSecure. And our mission here is saving the world from unsafe mobile apps. Hello, I'm Ole Andre, the creator of Frida. For those of you not familiar with Frida, it is an open source toolkit that allows you to observe and manipulate software as it's running. Um, that might sound like a debugger, and you'll be right, but unlike a debugger, Frida is designed to be in process, letting you inject your own code into the target processes. The code you inject can then use Frida's APIs to intercept function calls, it can scan memory for patterns, it can trace execution on a per thread basis, and do a whole lot more. What's cool is that you can write your instrumentation in a scripting language and modify your instrumentation code live without any compilation or deployment step. You don't even have to restart the target process. All of this is designed to work on black box binaries, so you don't even need any source code. And what's more, Frida supports a broad range of operating systems, such as Windows, Mac OS, Linux, iOS, Android, etc. And also it allows you to call functions and access memory in a very exploratory fashion, where if you try to access a bad pointer, it won't crash the process, but will give you an exception you can handle, and you can then quickly adapt your instrumentation. So with that, I think we're ready to get into the interesting bits. Take it away, Pancake. Today, we will inspect an IoT app for iOS that needs a Bluetooth low energy device to work. We will pick a random one from the App Store. As long as we have the LED lights that are connected to the application, we'll be able to instrument the interface using r 2 frida as well as trace all the internal APIs that are used to modify the color lights and the brightness. We'll also check and try to reduce the amount of resources used by the app, not just the ones used by the CPU, but also how many privacy sensitive related resources we will find. Uh, we will detect and block any possible data leak. And at the end, we will be using all that information and comments to flash the lights in red when the application tries to communicate with the microphone. After evaluating different options from the App Store, I end up picking up an app that is named Let Black. This app was updated last time in 2018. And it's the recommended app to be used for these $10 uh, LED lights. Uh, for analyzing this application, we will be using the following tools. Uh, first of all, we will be using R2, compile it from Git. Then we will be also using Frida, the last stable version, which is 14.2.18. And finally, we will be also using the Frida plugin for R2. You can install this plugin using the R2PM-CI R2 Frida. After a while, you will get the new plugin loaded into the current session. Early instrumentation is one of the most important things that we do when reverse engineering mobile apps. It allows us to instrument the app before any code gets executed. This allows us to find out if the application is doing anything before the interface gets rendered to the user. In order to do this, as we said before, we will be using r 2 Frida, which is an R2 frontend for Frida. We said already how to install r 2 Frida plugin using the r 2 pm command for, from r 2 but we don't know yet how to use it. So to do that, we will check the help of the Frida URI scheme. We can check out that there is like different ways and different, different paths to execute the application using this URL plugin. Uh, we will basically focus on those and these three, attach, spawn, and launch. So as the application is running, we can just find out which is the process ID or application name by using the following things. We can attach through the USB on the default USB device because right now we only have one device connected. And if we press enter right now, we will see all the process IDs that are running inside the device. If we want to get applications names, we can just use launch USB slash slash, and then we will get the application listing. So, Let's begin with uh, attaching to the current application. We know that the name is like this, so we'll just run it this way. As you can see, 
In this session, we have the r 2 plugins from the Workstation project. This is a now secure product. Hope you enjoy it. And we can interact with the app. Lights are working as expected. Uh, but we don't see anything here. All the r 2 the comments are executed through the dot uh, colon common, which is like this. You can get the help by appending a question mark at the end. And basically, it provides different comments for uh, running different JavaScript code inside the agent of, the, uh, of Frida, which is running inside the current application that we are analyzing here. So many of these comments are very similar to the ones that we have in R2. So we, if you are used to use R2, you can probably just uh, type the same comments and uh, prefix them using the colon character. OK, so let's check the other URLs. So, as I said before, we have the touch, we can spawn, and we can also launch, which is the difference between spawn and launch. If we spawn the app, the application will be sp starting in a suspend state. This means that the application won't be running. It will be basically loaded in memory, but nothing will be executed. This is perfect for us, because it will be allows us to inspect, instrument, create any hook on any method for any Objective-C class, and or maybe patch the memory, like uh, changing the HTTP URL uh, schemes from the memory uh, for something else. So we will be using this, but if we want just to go to the application and launch it, we will be using the launch URL scheme. So let's try this one. And let's use the same let blee. And then we can see that the application gets killed, gets spawned at the same time, and we basically get an application that is not running. We cannot interact with this. But we can press DC to continue the debugging session and the application gets working again. We have to connect to the Bluetooth device again to get that working and here we see the application is running. Fetching resources from the app is the next thing that we are interested in doing. So after getting the app running on a jailbroken device and attaching Frida to it, we are ready for having fun with the new comments using uh, R2Frida. So one of the comments that are pretty common at the beginning of any r 2 the session is the colon init. This comment basically executes a different comments that initialize the state from r 2 frida into r 2 session. So we can prefix this comment with a dot to get all these comments executed and we'll get all the, uh, all the comments ready. The most interesting one right now is the r 2 frida uh, mount point. This is accessible using the ms command. The ms is basically a virtual file system mount point that gets loaded into R2. So we have two mount points loaded in here, and we can check the R2 F1. This endpoint shows and allows us to enumerate all the files that are inside the application, as well as in the home of the application. We have the temporal directory, for example, or we can have like uh, system data, library, random list, etc. And also we can all have full access to the root file system. This is pretty cool as long as we don't need SSH to download the files from the application. We can just go into the app bundle and retrieve the let ble executable. So you can just grab this and grab for let. So we can just type this and we will download the file. As long as uh, we get the file, we will be also interested in getting the info.plist. This file can be read it in plain text using a text editor. So it's just kind of XML file. Uh, usually this file is found in different file formats like binary format uh, or JSON, uh, but we can use plutil command to co convert the file into the, uh, each of these formats. So apart from that, we can get more information from the app by using the colon i common. The colon i common shows you which is the target architecture, uh, the operating system that is running, process ID, and probably the most interesting one is the home directory, temporal directory, and bundle directory. This is the absolute path of the directories that you found uh, by listing the app home, app bundle, and device uh, virtual endpoints that are the ones that the application is seeing from inside. So basically, we are using r 2 free the uh, tool mount the remote file system of the uh, of the of the device, and using the perspective of the application to do that. Uh, we can also upload files, so we can basically download the file. Uh, we can also enumerate the memory pages in order to dump the process memory. So in this case, we can see that there is the macro header in, in there, and we can see that the file size for this map 
ends in here. So we can quickly compute the size of this range, which is a couple of megabytes. So we can just download this into a file and using the write to file command. So dump it memory executable with this size. After waiting a while, we'll get the file dumped into disk and we can use that for patching or uh, analyzing the code of the application. We'll have a quick look on the main binary and the info list, which is a file that is shipped inside the app directory and it describes the app itself. We have downloaded this file before, so we can just load it into our favorite editor and just searching for the script, we'll jump into all the special permissions that the application is requesting. This is not really needed for the application to work because the we can remove that and the application will still be able to access these descriptions. But it's in theory something that will be used by the user to understand why this application is requesting access for the photo library or uh, the camera, etc. So as we can see, there is some more uh, uh, permissions that the application is requesting or informing the user that is going to be using. And also there is some more stuff that is not good. We check that this application is allowing to load uh, URLs without encryption. This means that uh, if this is set to false, any URL like this will be blocked by uh, the operating system. But it is not like that. This means that the application is able to transfer data to the internet without any encryption uh, set. So let's jump into the main executable and we will see that using the info dot uh, the let ble, uh, using Robin 2 minus OC, we will get the entitlements. And we can see that this binary have no special entitlements. It just describes the application identifier and who's the, the developer or the team identifier that the, uh, has signed this binary. Uh, so the application is not requesting anything special. Everything is done by the API. So we will have to look deeper into that. Apart from that, we want to have a look at the strings. In a quick way, we can just get the strings like this, basically using Robin 2 minus QQZ and then grabbing for HTTP. We can see that there is a bunch of annoying or strange URLs that are basically pointing to macOS applications. Uh, we can check that, but it seems like all these pages are 404, so it doesn't exist. And we can also check the same goes for HTTPS. And we see that all the strings or all the URLs that are uh, used in uh, encrypted mode are basically for tracking user interactions. And we probably don't want to handle that. So we don't want the user to be tracked. We can patch the, bi the binary using this one liner. Um, I loaded the binary using the minus NW because this way the minus N is not parsing the binary headers and minus U, W is, is loading the file in, in read write mode. So we can patch the file. Okay, so first thing we would like to search for all the strings containing HTTPS, uh, HTTP colon slash slash, and we can identify all the strings that we found using Robin 2. We can also do the same for HTTPS. So how to patch this? We can, we basically want to modify all these URLs to make the binary uh, not work because the uh, URLs will not be valid, so the connection will not be happening. So we can write HXXP in all the uh, results for the uh, search for this string. So we can uh, run that and then we can do the same for HTTPS. After this, we can quit and we can run the strings again to verify that the patch happened work. And we can see that this is working fine as expected. Accessing any of these resources is a common privacy concern for many users. Uh, we can block the access to the microphone or the Apple Music using the settings, but there is some resources that cannot be blocked, like for example, accessing the photo or the pictures, and maybe we want to be able to detect when the application is trying to access one resource before the system is blocking the access to it. So in order to do that, we'll be using the diff o common. The diff o common is one of the subcommands for DI. The DI intercepts and replaces the return value for any of the functions. So we can inject uh, return 0, return 1, or return minus 1 before or after the original function is executed. In addition, we will be using one of the configuration options for R2Frida, which is the new hook.usecmnd. This configuration allows us to execute one comment when the, the hook is executed. So in this case, for example, we want to execute 
a clippy comment saying hello world. We can test this by using the question mark uppercase E and then hello world. And we'll see Clippy saying hi. Uh, the thing is that what happens if we prefix that with colon is that this will be executed inside the device. So this is the R2 free the common and the other one is the R2 common. So in this case, we are prefixing that with the colon, so it will be executed inside the device. So next thing that we want to do is to basically hook all these methods. So uh, in order to detect when the application is trying to access the microphone, we will hook this method. And then we can do the same for when the application is trying to access the image speaker controller, which is the way that the application is using to get pictures from the user. As we can see, this source is just limited to uh, the images selected by the user. The thing is that uh, this can be fine because the application is not able to access all the pictures, but we can say that for some kind of applications, it's not good that the application is able to access the, the pictures, even if just picking from the users, like maybe some applications for kids or maybe some kiosk apps or so on. Okay, so now we have like uh, a couple of hooks and one command that will be executed when trying to access these resources. And it will be returning nil. Uh, in this case, it is just uh, not giving access to the shared instance for using anything from related to audio. To trigger this, we will click the music tab and then go to the microphone. And we can see that this is executing the hello world. There is something important that we didn't explain before, is that the application, it won't be notifying the user that is accessing the microphone. We can verify that by checking the status bar on the operating system because it becomes red. Uh, the thing is that iOS, it won't be notifying the user uh, in the status bar when the application is running in full screen, even if this, there is like this full screen status bar mode. We can verify that if we go back and we see that there is like status bar in normal, but if we go there and jump into the music tab, we can press the microphone and we will see that the lights are starting to change colors. So we can see that there is something going on and we go back and but there is no access to the microphone. But if we jump back into the microphone and go back, we'll see that the status bar is, is red. This means that the application is listening to the microphone having background. So we'll stop that. We change the colors to reset the thing. So we can start back into the normal mode. Okay, so next thing is that we will be using this script um, to execute uh, different methods from the application that is running. And these methods will be uh, changing the color lights. And we want this script to be executed when the uh, uh, specific hook is, is getting called. So we can do that by changing the comment, like hook.usecmd. We will run the flashlight, flash red, R2 script. And then we just need to hook the methods. So we just want to hook the method that is accessing the microphone. And to do this, we can just use the F0 as we did before and associate the audio session .charred instance. So now the R2 will be waiting for events coming from the R2 Frida site. So if we try to access the, the microphone, we'll be flashing the, reds in, the lights in red. And it will be popping up a dialog saying that we don't want to use the microphone. But the application is still working, but just not accessing the microphone. If you're interested in mobile security, Frida, Radar, and reverse engineering in general, I will recommend you to join the community channels for these projects and follow the link below to read more details and information about the current presentation. If you are interested in mobile security, Frida, Radar, and reverse engineering in general, I will recommend you to join the community channels for these projects and follow the link below to read more details and information about the current presentation. And with this, we are finishing the talk, so thanks for watching. Uh, if you have any question, feel free to drop a mail to us and hope you enjoyed.